And the second noble truth, thirst, craving, wanting things to be other than they are. They're not. It's like this right now. It's like this right now. And as we get a little freedom from that wanting it to be different, we have a little freedom. And one of the impactful ways to cultivate that is letting go. And I brought this calligraphy from Thich Nhat Hanh with me this evening to support us and remind us of the practice of letting go. My first talk here at the Dharma Collective, I spoke on the theme that dukkha is to be known. The first noble truth of dukkha, unsatisfactory and discontent, lots of other translations. Their practice is to know it, is to recognize it. Oh, this is dukkha, to see it for what it is. And then the second noble truth, tanha or thirst, it's to be abandoned. It's to be let go of. And so this evening, that will be our focus. And so in our formal practice, we're about to settle into we're going to focus on letting go and I'll guide us in some words and you can allow my words to recede into the background or you can tend to them as, as supports you. So taking this opportunity to find your posture, you can stand up, you could lie down, you can walk, there's room to walk in the hallway there or in this other sitting room or behind the chairs or even in the ante room in the lobby. All of the postures are supportive for wakefulness. We can fall into some idea that like sitting is the posture and specifically like sitting full lotus or something, but it's just a posture. It's a posture. And I find that it's really helpful to bring in some movement before we settle into our posture so that you can discern what posture will be most supportive for this body right now. Mm -hmm. And if it feels supportive for you, you can allow the eyes to close. If eyes open feels like that's more the way you want to practice at this time, that's great too. You just might turn away from the camera if you're on Zoom. Or if you're in the space here this evening, you might let the eyes gaze down, maybe 45 degrees resting on the floor. If you prefer eyes open in general, you might explore finding a blank wall and sitting upright long and strong and letting the eyes gaze out straight ahead onto a blank wall. Or some people like a candle to stare at a flame or gaze upon a flame. Finding your path of practice. There are many, many ways to cultivate mindfulness. And there are many ways to practice meditation. And this evening, as every evening, with Monday Mindfulness and Spiritual Friend Sangha, the practice is a cultivation of mindfulness, of presence, of embodied awareness. And I invite you to feel into the body. Feel the body standing here. 
sitting here, lying down, walking, whatever posture the body might be in, feeling the body in the body. And notice the body hearing. I'll invite a little wake up sound. And then three full invitations of the bell. Opening to your experience, hearing whatever comes into your body, into your eardrums. And while we're sitting here this evening, in about 10 minutes, the bells on the church next door will chime. If you notice them, allowing them also to support you in coming home to yourself. If I'm speaking when they begin, I'll stop so that I can hear them. And then I'll continue the bell I'm about to invite, those church bells, and all other matter of sound can be bells of mindfulness calling us home to ourselves. A little wake-up sound to let you and the bell know it will be invited to sound. And then three full sounds of a bell. Body, speech, and mind in perfect oneness. I send my heart along with the sound of this bell. May all who hear awaken from forgetfulness transcending all anxiety and sorrow. Just as the sound of the bell arises and passes, so too do all conditioned experience. And we can practice to bear witness to this arising and passing. For many of us, tuning in to the experience of breath, each breath arising and passing can be supportive. Riding the waves of the in-breath. And 
and the out breath. Just as we were riding the sound waves of the bell. Experiencing the breath coming in through the nostrils. Experiencing the breath going out through the nostrils. In. And out. Breath by breath. And of course, attention doesn't stay resting on awareness of the breath. Thoughts of the past, thoughts of the future, some judgment of the present. These arise and pass in the mind as well. Just like the breath, just like sounds arising and passing. And we can witness them. And we can welcome them. And we can let go of them. Just as we practice welcoming and letting go of the breath. Allowing the thoughts to run their course rather than getting up and doing battle with them it doesn't work so well cultivate our ability to be with ourselves to be with this moment to be with ourselves as we are to be with this moment as it is Cultivating our ability to welcome and let go. Again and again. Breath by breath. Moment by moment. Welcoming and 
and letting go. Inviting the body to let go, to rest, and settle into the earth. Allowing the body to let go into the embrace of gravity. Feeling the hug of Mother Earth holding us close. Letting go. If it's supportive for you, continuing to rest into awareness of the body resting, letting go. Letting go and opening to whatever you might become aware of, to whatever presents itself, arising and passing, as all conditioned things do. We just rest in open awareness. If a little more focus and structure would support you, I invite you to rest into awareness of the breath. With a gentle welcoming with each inhalation. Welcoming the breath, welcoming your heart, welcoming the mind state, physical states that might be present. Welcoming with each inhalation. And with each exhalation, letting go. Letting go of planning, remembering, judging. Letting go of the breath. Letting go of straining and striving. Allowing the body to rest as we let go of the breath. 
when we let go of our agendas. Welcoming and letting go. Welcoming. Ah, it's like this. I see you, Mara. And letting go. And occasionally we'll notice when we're not here. Fantasizing, remembering, rehearsing, judging. This is the nature of the mind, no problem. But we've noticed. And that's a beautiful thing. Worthy of appreciation and celebration. For that noticing, that's a moment of mindfulness. And allow that experience of noticing to be felt in the body and to infuse the moment. We return to letting go. Perhaps even using the words letting go as a mantra of support or presence.
The mind generates thoughts the way the mouth secretes saliva. That's no problem. Our practice is to notice and let go, to become a little less identified with this thinking mind, to see it and release it. Moment by moment, breath by breath, letting go. And then a wily thought gets in there and says, no, I'm important. Pay attention. And we recognize that. And we let go. Letting go of our notions of how things should be. welcoming and embracing this moment as it is.
Is there any holding in the body that can be let go of a little bit more? Letting go. Allowing yourself to be held, to feel the embrace of the earth. Gradually expanding awareness to include movement, really being aware of the movement of the body. 
small, large, whatever feels good right now. If the eyes are closed, it can be helpful to keep them closed for just another beat. So as to heighten our ability to be aware of the sensations of movement in the body. I find that twists are really great after a period of seated meditation. And if you've been sitting on the floor, or even in a chair, but definitely on the floor, it's really nice to fold forward as well. And as you're ready, bringing in light for whatever level of sightedness you have. And noticing what you see, it can be really supportive to choose a arena to focus on. So specifically, perhaps taking in color and allowing the mind to name the colors or just to perceive the colors or shapes, one realm or the other. Or a third practice that I have found helpful over the years is to just name for myself and look for linear and circular shapes or forms. Thank you for your practice. So if you're with me, you don't practice to have a good practice. I mean, you know, sometimes it's nice. You have a, a settled experience. You're like, oh, yeah, that feels good. Or I feel a little bit better or something like that. But we practice so that our lives can be a little bit easier or more bearable or more pleasant or we can be more awake to them or something like that. We don't practice meditation to become good meditators, right? Like that's not what it's about. We practice so we can be more warm. <laughs> we practice so that we can be more aware, more present, more awake. And so I think it's really important that when we're coming out of a formal practice period, whether it's seated, walking, standing, lying down, or some other postures, we're in that transition. And that change, it's not like, there's a bell, I'm done. You know, it's like, no, what's that? It's like, oh, now I get to practice whatever I've cultivated, whatever awareness has arisen for me during this practice period to be more present in my life, right? You all don't come here or you haven't come to meditation or come to Buddhism because everything is just how you want it to be. <laughs> you know, you want to be here, <laughs> We come because of that first noble truth. We come to the practice because there is dukkha, right? That's what's up. And, you know, we could spend our lives trying to fight it, trying to run away from it, trying to hide from it. And if you're anything like me, you've spent some time doing that. And you've come to recognize the futility of that. Like, it just doesn't work. Right, it doesn't work. And so we, we come and we take our seats. So 
so that we can be here now, so that we can be open to what's here. We can notice what's nourishing us. And through that recognition of the nourishment, through the practicing of the nourishment, we then have greater capacity to tune into uh, what's that rough thing over here? Like, what's the rough stuff? And then we have greater capacity to be with that, right? We talked about that last week of the seed of mindfulness can rise to tend to the unwholesome mindset that's arisen. And so I invite you each time you meditate to practice in that time as you're coming out of formal practice to really be present to this now. And you can do what I offered tonight of no knowing color or form from one way or another, or you can just like be with the body as you come from stillness or you come from walking to the next movement to, to learn to be with ourselves as we are with whatever we're doing, with whatever we're doing. And I wanted to talk tonight specifically about the practice of letting go, right? Lots of pieces of that are alive for me as I've been pondering and reflecting. And the thing that shows up right in this moment is the significant truth about letting go is that you have to pick it up. You have to look at it. You have to observe it. And maybe you're not sighted, so it's like you don't see it. It's more of a recognition and cognizing. You touch it, you feel it, you engage with it through whatever sense doors are available. Eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, mind. But you have to pick it up in order to let it go. It's just how it is. But we want to skip that part. We don't want to like turn to and look at it. We just want it to be done like the suffering. Like, I just want freedom from this dukkha. I haven't found that it works that way. I just haven't found that it works that way. But as I cultivate my ability to be with myself for the whole show, and as I cultivate my ability to notice what's nourishing me or to notice what's pleasant, or one of my favorite phrases from a girlfriend of mine back east, to notice what doesn't suck or what Thich Nhat Hanh calls the non-toothache. Like, can I notice that? The more I notice that and the more I allow myself to experience that, the greater my capacity to be with the gunk, to be with the shit, to be with the dukkha, to turn toward it, to see it, to recognize it so that I can let it go. And it, it might be counterintuitive. You know, we might think, oh, we want freedom from this thing. How could turning toward it, you know, looking at it, actually embracing it, how could that help me have freedom? But it's the only thing that I found that works. So try, you know, let me know. Come back next week and say, oh my God, you asked me to do that thing and it was awful. Or you might get to come back and say, oh, wow, that was super helpful. Thank you. And maybe for weeks or months or years, it's just a practice of noticing what doesn't suck. Just tuning into that non toothache, right? Like, oh, yeah, just the hand, the feel of my hands on my knees, like the experience that my hands are having, and then the experience that my knees are having as I receive the warmth, like, oh, that's pleasant. I can take that in. And maybe I'll spend a lifetime just taking in the stuff that's pleasant. But maybe maybe just a, a year or two or 10 years of doing that and then we're able to, to notice, oh yeah, there's that thing. That's what's, that's what's eating at me. Oh, hi, who are you? Right, invited to tea. You know, another angle is so, the first noble truth, dukkha, is to be known. The second noble truth, tanha, is to be let go of, to be relinquished, to be released. And tanha, which as I name is usually translated as, as craving, 
the literal translation of Tanha is thirst. So there's this inherent thirst, craving, desire. I think of it as, you know, for this moment to be other than it is. But this moment is as it is. It, it can't, it can't, it can't, it can't, it can't, it can't be different. The next moment, that can be different, right? In this moment, we can bring in something else that will inform the next moment. That's where we have our agency. But this one that's already here, it's informed by everything that's already happened. But in this moment, oh, there's some freedom to, to inform this moment. And one of the things that we can do next, you know, in the present to inform the future is to let go. Like, oh, I don't have to, I don't have to hold on so tight. I don't have to try to make it some special way or some particular way. Because that trying to make it a way, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's like being caught in a fight with reality. It's just not how it, it's not how it happens. But as we stop and rest and nourish ourselves, we feel greater capacity to look more deeply, to perceive, to discern, to recognize. And in that, there is also freedom. And I'd like to invite you, if you feel comfortable closing your eyes, you can close your eyes. You don't need to. But if that supports you, please, I invite you to close your eyes and check in. In some moment of the recent past that you can remember trying to push your agenda. And wanting things to be some particular way and then trying to get in there and make them like that. Subtly, aggressively, passive aggressively, like whatever your style is, you're, you're trying to get in there, make it a certain way. And how did that work for you? Maybe nothing comes to mind. Maybe 50 things come to mind. It's all good. Can you feel it in your body? And then allowing that to recede. Or maybe it's too charged and it stays. That's fine. Calling into your mind, into your heart, a moment when you allow the unfolding to occur, when you let go, when you let it happen of its own accord, when you weren't in there trying to meddle, make it the way you thought it should be, the all-knowing you. And you let it happen. And then you cared for what happened. You cared for yourself in response to what happened. And maybe you don't have a clear memory for that either. That's okay. But just a little thought experiment. I invite you to open your eyes as you wish. I know that for me in that thought experiment, it's so clear. If I'm in there trying to make it the way I want it to be, it's a mess. I'm in conflict. And when I'm able to move aside and be with the unfolding, you know, get out of the way, let go and let it happen. Crazy cool things happen that I never would have expected. Turns out I'm not in charge as much as I might wish to be. Hmm. So allowing that to settle, noticing anything that I said that felt useful or resonant for you to kind of soak in, anything that didn't make sense to let it fall away. And anything that you just like, you didn't like, let it go, you know, take what you like and leave the rest. Let it be here for you. And appreciating yourself for taking the time to practice and, and to listen and to be here. <laughs>